Man, so we gotta go. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come quickly, please. Come in, come in. And uh, if you would, share. Share with your followers. Hello, Cece, how are you? Hope you had a beautiful day. Hello from Michigan. How are you? I'm going to answer a question that you asked. I started following you, uh, KNF. I started, uh, Kiana, I started following you because you asked the question. And I, I saw that question keep coming up. And so I'm going to answer that question for you, okay? You'll know what I'm talking about. Hello, Cha-Cha, how are you? Hi, Victory. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be a quick scope, and then I'll come back later because i got to get, get the information um, for you for the um, thing this Saturday coming up. I'm so excited. Oh, it's going to be great. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't scope uh, over the weekend because yet, Sunday I was churching. Yeah, I'm. I, yeah, okay. You got me. Good, good, good. I'm gonna answer that question for you. Um, and so I said, Lord, and I normally don't do that, but I said, okay, God, I don't know how else to reach her except the follower. Maybe she'll follow me back, and we'll get to that. So, um, welcome, Aeon sixty one, Titus woman sixty six. Welcome, welcome. Come on in, guys. Hi, Latrice. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Um, would you guys share real quick and then also uh, give me some hearts. I'm going to cover this real quick, okay? I just want to give, uh, I, I'm not really, I'm not, um, and bless you as well, darling. Um, I don't, I'm not refuting what someone else says, okay? I'm built, I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, piggybacking off what was said about this spirit of molestation. Um, but I want to give you some more insight to that because I know sometimes when you get on certain scopes and there's so many people, it's hard because y'all, those, those things are rolling really, really quickly. The more people you have, of course, and sometimes they don't see the question at all, or in some cases, um, welcome Paulette Marie. Hey darling, how are you? Um, sometimes they, uh, can either can't see the question or miss it. Or in the midst of answering someone else's question, that question comes and two or three more questions. I am very well. Uh, two or three more questions come up at the same time. And so it's just hard for them to answer the question or to really um, uh, address that that you're asking. And I know that happens to me too um, uh, when I go on those. But I still listen, you know, anyway and take what I, I just get whatever information I can glean from it. But um, I want to... Just go over this really quickly for about um, maybe like 15 minutes, if that. Okay. Um, welcome, Dov Kell. I hope I'm saying this right. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, guys. Share for me, please. I, and let me say this. If I came on your page and I didn't share, it was not on purpose. I realized that when you do the thing up because I use iPad and I use uh, welcome and I use Android so uh, I didn't realize that you have to actually when you pull it up I thought that automatically shared it but you have to actually do something further like hit share and send it and I didn't realize that so on some of them if I if it looked like I was sharing and then stop that's why so I do apologize it wasn't on purpose this is my third week on Periscope so I'm learning Okay, um, I'm still learning. Uh, yeah, I've only been on for three weeks, so I'm learning. Um, but I want to talk real quickly about this, um, um, this spirit of molestation and the, and and rape, and uh, because I, it's come up, y'all, it's come up, and I believe it come came up on purpose because God reveals. You know, I taught you that He reveals to heal. And so what's happening is I hear a lot of people addressing the molestation, but not addressing the other things that come with. So sometimes people don't know what, what other stuff came with, because sometimes they can deal with that one thing, but then the other uh, subservient or helper spirits or um, um, guardian spirits or um, those spirits that work with that particular thing are not dealt with which means that the person can stay open 
and the door can stay open for that thing to re-enter because that it wasn't all of them were not addressed and dealt with. I do deliverance. I've done deliverance. Um, I've learned from different people who have done deliverance for years. I'm not talking. I'm not talking just twenty or thirty. I'm talking like years. Okay, that have learned from some of the original deliverance ministries and it's been passed on to them. So I, I learned deliverance. Um, I believe in thoroughly going through deliverance for certain issues. Some things you can kind of do yourself um, because you are born again, believer, filled with the Holy Spirit. But there are some things you really have to go through deep, deep deliverance for. And so when we're talking about the spirit of molestation, I just want to give you a couple of things uh, about that and the rape. Um, we dealt with this on the relationship scope when I was looking at those. Um, I talked about molestation. I talked about um, how it affects your relationship. So many people do not realize that when they have gone through this type of thing that they need to be healed. It's not just about coming to acknowledge it. And so one of the things that people really stress is Talking about it with someone, telling somebody, sharing. That's one part, okay? That's one part and that's good. Uh, uh, letting a person, especially if you're married, let your spouse know, you know, this is something you encounter because they need to be, they need to know how to handle that when it comes to that because you may still need some healing in that area, okay? Um, the other thing, yes, molestation and rape will create a soul tie. Now, a lot of times people think that these ungodly soul ties was everything we just did intentionally. No, those sexual things that happen to you, it could be, it doesn't have to be just physical, okay? You can have an emotional soul tie, okay? Uh, you can also have a an, uh, a, an attachment um, or an ungodly connection to a thing. So a soul tie is a, you can have a soul tie with where you're, Mind, will, and emotions are um, moved or uh, invoked or aroused or, you know, whatever words you want, awakened, alerted. Um, it can be a person, place, or thing. So think of it that way. So with the person, you will have a soul tie, okay? So you will break the ungodly soul tie to that person, right? With a place, that is a, that's a, uh, that's a thing, okay? So uh, that place. So you can break an ungodly uh, attachment to the place because it doesn't have a soul. Um, and then the third thing would be um, a, a, a thing like, say, a stuffed animal. I'm just throwing out examples, okay? I'm not looking at my notes, so I'm just going to welcome Sharon. Um, uh, it's uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Elder Kim, Marquise. Welcome, you guys. If I, I hope I said your name right. If I didn't, forgive me. Uh, welcome, Kish. And so that that thing, you have to also break the ungodly attachment to that thing. So what does that mean? That means that if you were ever a person who was molested or raped, and I'm going to back up. I want to give you another nugget real quick about this. Um, I hope you had a beautiful day. Um, bless you, darling. Thank you. If, if you were molested, uh, some people are dealing with the molestation, but not the rape. Okay. Yeah. That's that the, because see, let me tell you, I'm gonna explain to you the difference between the molestation and rape. And some of you, some people have encountered them together. So you want to deal with the spirit of rape as well as the spirit of molestation. Molestation is this: a a person who is uh, more powerful, greater. Uh, you uh, you know, of course, of uh, an adult of age comes and takes advantage. Uh, of a smaller child, a, a minor child, a minor. And that's whether they 13, 12, because I know sometimes they say, well, they're a certain age. It's a minor child, an adult, taking advantage of a minor child. And this is what happens in molestation. Hear me hear me well. In molestation, the, uh, the, the person will cause that child, that minor, to trust them some kind of right. Some kind of way they're going to get them to trust them. Uh, you've heard people talk about people giving kids candy. Hey, darling. Okay, awesome. We're just about to leave the hospital. Okay, good, good. I'm so glad to hear it. Thank you for the report. And I think you're beautiful in spirit and naturally. So that's why I said that. Um, so if a person 
uh, if a child, when a child is molested, that's molestation. The adult person who clearly understood what they were doing was wrong uh, superimposed themselves, but they did it by comforting the victim. They made them feel comfortable. Okay, um, you know, this is what uh, big girls and boys do, or or this is how, uh, 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 you know, uh, a daddy would touch a girl or an uncle would touch a, uh, you know, a big girl because you're a big girl. They're getting them to trust them. In other words, let your guard down and allow me in, okay? Hey, Shay, beautiful girl, I need some of the peppermint foot scrub. I need you to inbox me and tell me how to get it, okay? Because I saw it, I was like, oh, like, that's that's for me. Um, so that's what happens. It's always a trust factor somewhere. This is why people who were really molested, they have real deep-seated trust issues. They don't trust anybody. Why? Because the, the person, that adult... Uh, went in and said, hey, trust me, you know, you're a big girl, you're a big boy, you know, we're friends, right? So this is what friends do. They got you to trust them some kind of way, or it was a person you already trusted. If it was a parent, or an auntie, or a grandparent, you already trusted them. So they would say stuff like, well, you know I would never hurt you. You know I love you. Those are the things that a molester would say to a minor child to get them to let your guard down. So you're not going to fight them. You're not going to scream. You're not going to yell. You're not going to tell them to uh, uh, stop. And that's why a lot of times these people have deep-seated trust issues. Because it was a person they really trusted. Because the person got, caused them to gain their trust. And then they took advantage of them, okay? Now, a person who is dealing with a rape, some of you, some people have both, okay? Rape is just that it's a force. The person forced themselves sexually upon someone who was more vulnerable. Whether they fought, yell, scream, cry, it didn't matter. They still forced themselves. In some cases, it wasn't just molestation, it was rape. So you cannot leave that spirit of rape there and just dig out the molestation. You got to uproot the rape. You got to uproot the molestation. You got because those two things are like twins. They are working together. And so if you only dealt with one part and said, oh, I was molested, but you didn't deal with the rape because you it was forced on you. That is what molestation is also a force, but it's a force by trickery because there's a there's a getting the person to trust. With rape, whether you trust or not, fight or not, it doesn't matter. Whether you're saying no, stop, it, it doesn't matter. And then they don't really care how you feel afterward. This is also again why people with this have struggled with deep seated trust. They have deep seated trust issues. In other words, it takes a whole lot for them to trust. And so they don't trust easily then. And when people betray them or, or break their trust, it puts them in a bad place. And I'm saying this because for those of you in relationships, and especially if you're married, and this has happened and your spouse doesn't even know about it, one, or um, your spouse may know about it but not understand to the degree um, that it took for you to trust someone again. So you want to deal with both of those. Now, I'm going to give you some other things that these little helper spirits, I call them these little covering spirits, these little subserving spirits, they also serve along with the molestation and the rape. One of them, of course, we know is guilt, um, shame, um, and a lot of people, let me tell you, people who've been raped and molested, <clears throat> excuse me, they really struggle with that spirit of shame because they feel like it's their fault. Some people did tell and nothing was done. Okay, that's also considered a betrayal. I'll say that again. Some people told an adult or a parent that so-and-so touched me or hurt me or did something inappropriate and nothing was done. That is considered betrayal. So you got betrayal again now because you went and told and you felt like it didn't matter. And you are that person that will also now uh, literally hold everything in. I'm not telling nothing. And so people have to just, you know, drag stuff out of you. It's so hard for you to share and open up because you you just made up in your mind. What good is it if I tell? Nobody's going to do anything. Nobody's going to care. So now you got the spirit of betrayal um, also working there, okay? Of course, you got guilt. Now, you got betrayal as well. And um, <clears throat> you also, of course, have a spirit of offense. All right? 
Some people say, oh, I forgave them, but you know, God get them. That's a, you still got the spirit of offense. It comes in to help out molestation and rape. So you got guilt, okay? You got betrayal, you got offense, all right? You got those, these are the helper spirits to this thing. The chief thing is the molestation and rape together or in the, you know it may just been rape on some case may have just been molestation and then so um the other thing so you got guilt you got betrayal and then you have uh um you got the guilt and the betrayal and uh i'm not looking at my nose so i'm trying to remember um you got the guilt what did i say guilt and you got betrayal and then you also um I forgot the third one, so I'm going to have to go back and listen because I forgot. I'm going to write it down. Um, so, you offense. I'm sorry. Thank you. Offense. Yes. And shame. Shame is also one of them. So, you got guilt, betrayal, offense. You got shame. Thank you, darling. Um, welcome, Sasha. I didn't see you come in. Um, and so, you got those. And then you also, um, you also have feelings of inferiority. Remember I told you about the gift? Guilt, inferiority, fear, and trauma. So now you're going to have fear concerning any relationship. Fear. What if they betray me? What if I can't trust them? Because you got trust issues working there. You got the shame. You got the guilt. You got the inferiority. You got the offense. You got the betrayal. Okay? And then you also have um, 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 resentment. Let me put that in there. You have resentment. And that means that you resent uh, uh, even telling you can resent and this makes you quiet now when you need to be talking you'll be quiet when you need to share you will come go into confinement you'll you know you'll be back in your little close thin space and people like what's wrong what's wrong what's going on and especially if you got a loving spouse who really generally uh, gen genuinely loves you sincerely they're saying, what's wrong? What's got talk to me? Tell me what's going on. And you just resolve, I'm not. Because last time I told anything, hey Evangelist Joyce, love you. Um, then you you won't you won't talk about it with them. And they're begging you, please talk to me. Please tell me what's going on. Now I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you another little nugget, and I do have to go and you can get the playback, okay? I promise I'll come back tonight. I'm gonna talk about these different spirits, uh uh, you know, and uh how they uh they, you know, operate. I'm going to try to give you some real insight um, as the Lord leads me. I, it's so much stuff. And Minister Joyce can tell you I started teaching her and it's still a whole lot of stuff that I have never even gotten to with her um, because I just, we just haven't had the time. Um, but I want to share with you about some of these spirits because y'all, this God is revealing this stuff to heal. Please don't let the devil take you back and lie to you and tell you that God is, you know, that you're reliving this because of, no, God wants to heal it, okay? So, um, you have to deal with offense, betrayal, shame, guilt, inferiority, okay? And you have to deal with those um, because you want to make sure that you root those out of your, um, root those out. When you're going through deliverance and you're calling these things out, you want to get rid of those. Deal with those and deal with all the covering demons. Even if you don't know the name, hear me. Because some of you say, well, prophet, I won't remember all of that. Even if you don't remember the name of that thing, say everything that's helping out that came to serve or be a subservient spirit of molestation and rape. Put it like that, okay? Just don't let it stay in there. Because if it stays in there, it's going to create major, major problems for you, okay? So don't leave that in there. Uh, you also want to deal with perversion because you had some adult attracted to a minor who probably hasn't even, you know, maybe they had just blossomed or starting to blossom or maybe they weren't even blossoming yet, you know. And so, of course, you know, the pedophile, which is uh, ones where they deal with those that are not even blossomed yet. They, you know, they're literally almost like babies uh, as far as not having body hair and so forth. You get the picture. So you also want to deal with that spirit of perversion. Because it's also there. And it's a helper. Okay. It's a helper. Um, so you want to deal with that. Deal with the anger. Anger is another one. This is another subservient. Another helper. Another guardian spirit of molestation. Anger. Okay. See that anger. Because that anger is going to come back up somewhere. And I said this. I taught this in 2015. I was teaching them about healing. 
um, of the soul. Because that's what soul healing for life. That's literally what I do. Um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so um, you want to deal with that. Uh, deal with that perversion. Okay, the anger. Deal with that. Yeah, because you get angry. Because then you go back again and you're thinking, you know, sometimes a lot of people didn't tell. And it's okay, why I should have told, maybe if I had told, and maybe it would have protected this one or done that or done that. And so you're angry at yourself. So let me throw in this one. Forgive not only that person, but forgive yourself. Okay? I did not say forget, but forgive yourself, forgive them, and forgive you. Here's the other one. Because if you don't forgive, you cannot be forgiven. And that keeps a spirit of torment. So if you are still tormented in your mind about the rape and the molestation, then you got to deal with the, the tormenting spirit is there because you're not forgiving. Okay, you got to release, got to forgive them. It's for you. Amen. It's for your healing. And then I want to say this one as well. Not only um, uh, after you, you know, deal with the forgiving, we're going to, you got to ask for healing of your memory. I'm not saying you won't remember because people say, oh, just forget. No, the devil is a lie. To forget is dementia, okay? That is not godly. You don't want to forget. You want to forgive and you want the memory healed, okay? So that when you remember this thing, it doesn't cause the pain anymore. I'm telling y'all, God, I, listen, I've walked through this. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. I have walked this thing out, and I can tell you when I say I'm free, I'm not partially free. I'm not free a little bit. I'm all the way totally free. So I can speak freely on it, and I can tell you what those, all of the things um, that you have have. Uh, experience and I can tell you how I got healed. I got healed. My memory had to be healed. I kept trying to forget and I kept saying, well, maybe I haven't forgiven because I can't forget. I can't forget. And the Lord told me you will not forget because forgetting is dementia. You're not going to forget, but I want to heal that memory so that when you think of that thing again, when the devil tries to bring it up, it's not going to cause that pain and hurt anymore. Okay. It's not going to cause that pain and hurt anymore. Now, here's another one that some of you may, cause, and, and I'm throwing these out. Some of you, it wasn't one time. It was a beginning. Somebody said it started when I was nine. It started at seven or it started at six or five or ten. It started, meaning that it was ongoing for a number of years, okay? So this is why some of these things are very prevalent. That anger would be deep-rooted in a person that it was continuing in. Um, a person who had it happen once will not probably not have as much anger as the other person. But if you were raped and molested, then that anger is going to be equivalent to because there's a there's a, a it's a forced violation. OK, so you want to deal with that. You may even have to deal with violence. If you were raped, then you got to deal with the spirit of violence. That hurts my heart. I have to go. Wow. Yeah. So you want to deal with the violence because rape is a violent thing and the enemy can leave that. And so if you are raped, because I heard somebody say, well, I was molested. And then when I got in my teens, I just became very violent. And I said, no, you weren't just molested. You were raped because that violent spirit is prevalent. So the person started breaking the law, breaking in on people, talking about killing people and all. Violence was there because the anger had escalated to rage and then the violence was there. Okay. So you want to deal with that spirit of violence. Get it out. I'm telling you. Because that thing can take you to a place you don't want to be. I'm telling you. I, I thank God today because I said, you know, I really understand where I could be. I could be dead or I could be in prison be, and doing prison ministry. And I know God didn't call me to prison ministry nor anyone else. That is not a call of God. Okay. It may happen, but it's not a call of God. So. Um, deal with that. Deal with that anger and rage. Deal with that violence because I promise you, those people that that happened to, you have a violent streak. I, you, I'm telling you, you have a violent streak. I've seen it. I've heard people talk about it. you have a violent streak. And they say, oh, you just get so, why are you doing all of that? And see, they don't understand why. And you can't tell everybody everything, okay? But somebody you can trust 
talk about it with them, but go through deliverance. There's nothing wrong with talking about it and sharing. I believe that helps. I know that that's good therapy, but you want to have somebody you can literally uh, uh, you, that take you through deliverance. Some of these things you can do on your own. Maybe take a uh, one uh, uh, one at a time. You know, just start with the rape and the molestation, and then, like I said, if you don't remember all the things that came in with it, then go to. Every helper spirit of rape and molestation, I bind you. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Uh, away from me. I lose myself, my soul, my mind, will, and emotions, my spirit, my body. Because you also have to get rid of that wrong sexual impression. That put a stamp in your spirit and in your soul about sex. Okay? That's why I said deal with that spirit of perversion. That stamps your soul. So you want to deal with that stamp. And how you do that, you erase that wrong stamping that wrong sexual stamp bad sexual stamp evil sexual stamp erase it by the blood okay erase it because y'all know i believe in telling you giving you information but i want to give you revelation and i want to give you instruction i don't don't just tell me what it is i know what it is don't well, how do i get rid of it amen that's my heart i like to teach how, how you deal with this devil because he has no right to you. You belong to the Lord. You are a kingdom believer. God has stamped and sealed you in the Holy Ghost. And you got to remove any evil stamp with the blood of Jesus. Don't let that thing stay there any longer. In Jesus name. Amen. Y'all can see my passion. Okay. I'm getting, I'm getting excited. But I just wanted to share this with you. I hope this helps you um, deal with those things. But erase that sexual stamp. Wrong sexual stamp, evil sexual stamp with the blood of Jesus. Erase it. Okay? Get it off of you. And then speak healing to your sexual character. Because what happened is your sexual character was involved. You can see sex as something negative, something nasty, something not good. And you're struggling with your spouse who loves you. And I'm talking about the spouse that loves you. You got a spouse that really loves you, cares for you, wants to be intimate. And they cannot... Because of these things, you know, people still struggling in the bed, in their marriage bed with this stuff. Because some people won't get all the way, you know, uh, uh, expose themselves to their spouse. Some people, you know, got the, the lights got to be off. All these kind of crazy stuff. That's not normal. Because this is a... a the Bible talks about Adam and Eve were naked and they were not ashamed. They were naked to one another and they were naked before the Lord. They were not ashamed because they were in the right uh, guidelines. They were married one to another. This was the husband and the wife. So they should not be ashamed in any capacity. And some people will go to the other side and become extremely uh, uh, open to exposing themselves, you know, to a person. Just expose themselves really easily. Even if they ain't married to them, they'll expose themselves. That's why y'all got people taking all these pictures, sending them on these phones and stuff. And, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what that is. Because, and I'm, let me tell you what, baby. I'm going to minister to you for just a minute. Part of that, too, is because you feel the guilt and shame. And, and, and you know, okay, this is my husband. I'm his wife. It's okay for me to, to be intimate with him. But because of this stuff in the past that's not been dealt with properly. I'm not saying it wasn't dealt with at all because I'm not criticizing anybody and how they minister. It wasn't dealt with properly. Then now when it comes time for you to be intimate, that's where your struggle comes from with your husband. You know, because it's like, oh, he's going to want to touch me and it's uncomfortable, you know. To, to be touched. It's uncomfortable. Not because he's doing it wrong. But because of these things that have not been dealt with. So you got to get rid of these things. Get them off you. And Father right now just lift her up to you. I thank you Lord for not only her. But every person that is under the sound of my voice. Is listening right now. Father I thank you Lord for revealing these things to heal. I thank you for instructions. I thank you for teaching and telling us. And showing us by your spirit oh God. And, and giving us grace to know what to do about these things so that we can literally walk in the freedom that you have afforded us through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Now we take authority over and we bind molestation. We bind rape. We bind offense. We bind unforgiveness. We bind that sexual perversion. We bind the spirit of betrayal. We bind that spirit of mistrust, distrust, and miscommunication. In the name of Jesus, we bind and take authority over every spirit of guilt and inferiority and fear of trust 
disgusting. In the name of Jesus, we break your power. We cast you out to a dry and void place. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we use the blood of Jesus to erase the demonic sexual stamp that was made. In the name of Jesus, we erase that stamp with the blood of Jesus. And we decree and declare the sexual character is healed and remade like you, O oh God, intended for it to be. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that literally, Lord God, not only the character, but the memory is being healed right now. Heal that memory, God, so that when they remember it, when it comes up, it will no longer hurt. We ask and believe these things to be done in the name of Jesus. Now cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the great physician. Pour in the oil where there was disappointment, where there's discouragement. Father, pour in the oil. You're the balm of Gilead, oh God. Cover that place with yourself. Let the band-aids be snatched off, oh God. And Lord God, we remove the temporary suture and we ask, oh God, that you would bind up that broken heart with the, by the anointing in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I love you guys. I'll be back later, uh, probably about nine or so, um, because I have to run out. But I promise you, I'll be back. I'm going to talk some more about different kinds of spirits because, uh, listen, we are, God reveals to heal. And I'm going to give you some, even talk about some of these spirits that we're in warfare against. I'm going to deal with that Delilah spirit. Mm hmm. Delilah and that Jezebel spirit. We're going to deal with that because a lot of people don't know the ramifications of those spirits. They are seducers. But there's other things that come and kind of help you hopefully get a, a way of identifying this thing so you can deal with it. Okay. And I, and, and it, you know, tells you how to deal with it. All right. Um, so I will be back later. I love you guys so much. Um, and we'll talk some more about this stuff. Okay. God bless you all.